some of you know this story because I've told it a couple of times. But a couple of years back, I was in uh, South Africa in uh, an area called the Karoo. And I was on a paleontological expedition, which was a wonderful experience for me. I, was, I, was, I spent 10 days camping with 10 other guys who all had the name Professor Blankety Blank PhD, which was a really neat experience. And it was all I could do to keep standing on my tongue dealing with you know, some of the experts from Australia, France, UK, and so on. Uh, there were people from all over, and they were all like at the top of their field. And I'm on this paleontological expedition where it was very challenging physically because they would take us out and, and like drop us off at some place in the desert and we would each be like alone or in pairs of two and, and myself, I was usually alone. They would just drop me off someplace in the desert and say, hey, go, okay, we'll, we'll pick you up at eight or excuse me, at five o'clock in the afternoon, be somewhere near the road. Road. And so I would spend eight hours from, from, from like eight o'clock in the morning, I would spend until five o'clock in the afternoon wandering the, the a, a semi-arid desert by myself looking for fossils in all of my incompetence and occasionally stuttering or stumbling upon or, or uh, startling the local wildlife. And uh, fortunately that was never incredibly dangerous wildlife. But on the, yeah, the first couple of hours of that experience was, uh, was all very nice. It was a beautiful weather. But, you know, after you've been standing out in the sun for that many hours, the end of the day would just have sapped all of your energy. The last two hours, I had nothing left. I mean, the last two hours, I couldn't walk around anymore. I'm like, just, I need to find a very thorny bush that provides some kind of shade where I can go sleep with the cobras and the adders. I don't get just 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 wiped the fuck out as far as energy. But anyway, on our on our last day at this site, uh, somebody called in on the walkie-talkie that they had found toward the end of the day. They had found a huge fossil, and this was an important fossil. This was something that the, that the, the host of our trip had discovered that the species he had personally discovered, and which is named after him and they found a second example of that species on the top of this hill. And I managed to, uh, to find my way to where they are, and it was on the top of a very steep hill, and as I said, it was a very hot day, and we're not like just completely sapped of power, and now we have to carry, we just, we're just gonna carry the skull, just the skull by itself, but it's, the skull is in the matrix. So it's, this, this skull is encased in a hell of a lot of rock. So we pick up this one huge rock, which we eventually extracted. It took a half a dozen people, you know, hammering and chiseling away to break this thing out of the rock. And then six of us, using a backpack as a kind of a gurney, had to had to carry this thing together uh, two kilometers away, up down this hill, up the next hill, across the next hill. And this is all over jagged rocks and everything. And six of us carrying this heavy ass thing together and I remember complaining that if we had to go two kilometers like this in this very awkward way to get this back to the university provided trucks. And so I asked the guy who's directing this whole thing, I said, so these trucks of yours, they're four wheel drive, are they? And he said to me with a South African accent, he says, they drive on roads. So, yeah, we were not gonna be able to get the trucks anywhere near where we were. That irritated me. Because I didn't want to spend, at that temperature, that amount of time, all these people lugging this one heavy-ass thing all this way. And so I decided when I came home, I, I figured I would be on other expeditions like this. I thought they would probably be in the Permian Basin of West Texas, which is very similar to South Africa. I mean, the snakes have rattles as opposed to hoods, and there are no baboons. But otherwise, it's, it's basically the same kind of environment. Well, of course, when I come back is the, is the beginning of the COVID thing, so there were obviously no expeditions for that time. But I have been invited uh, by somebody who's worked with me on a couple of projects before. Benjamin Berger has invited me to a paleontological expedition that he's hosting, and this is going to be in the Badlands of Wyoming this July. Um, and so to prepare for this and prepare to, you know, for the eventuality of such an invitation, when I came home, I wanted to have a vehicle 
that was not like the university provided trucks. I wanted to have something that would be capable of getting all the way out to wherever that fossil was. Across all the jagged rocks, up the steep hill, all of that that the university provided trucks would not be able to do. So I bought this thing that I'm sitting in now. And so far, the two years that I've had it, because of COVID, I haven't been able to use it for the intended purpose. But now I just find out that I'm going to be able to take this thing to the Badlands of Wyoming, where we're going to be very, very remote. We're going to be several hours from the nearest airport. Uh, you know, in, in, <laughs> in probably the most remote place I've ever been, apart from the Karoo in South Africa. And we will be hunting for Eocene mammals, and I'm very, very excited about that. I'm going to be buying a new tent, setting up you know, new, new cooking gear and all of that. You know, going back to the old camping style that I used to engage in back in my 20s, which I haven't done forever. And I'm very excited about all of that, about being able to do that sort of a thing again. And being, again, with people who are, who are experts in their field. So this is going to be a wonderful experience. My wife is going to be able to join me. And the only real significant difference with this trip and the South African trip is one, this is going to be on my, my own continent so I can drive there. And two, there won't be any baboons. And that's important <laughs> because those things are nightmare fuel. But anyway, uh, very excited to be able to take this trip. When the guy reported it to me back in January, he said, hey, if you have time, you can come on this trip with us. Uh, and it just happens to be on the very weekend of your anniversary. And my wife was kind enough to say, hey, well, maybe we can do our anniversary celebrating on, on the previous weekend and go someplace nice for that. I'm like, outstanding. I'll be able to take this Jeep for the reason that I bought it and go to like a very remote area of the incredible beauty. I've never been to Wyoming. It's always irritated me when I look at, you know, like, like the, look at the uh, map of the United States and Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. I've never been to any of those. I will have been in Idaho. I'm going to be in Boise, Idaho in like three weeks because they want me to do an invocation on behalf of the Satanic Temple. So uh, that's going to be a bucket of fun, especially amid all of the machine gun toting right wing redneck lunatics out there. So that'll be a hoot, I hope, for my last days, one or the other. And then shortly after that, you know, we got in July, we'll be able to take this out into Wyoming. And so now I just need to find a reason to go to Montana, I guess. So just so I can fill in that gap. Anyway, I wanted to share this with you guys, and uh, thank you very much for letting me ramble. 